When I was a little boy, I dreamt about going into space. Uh, little did I know that uh, after becoming an architect, uh, that I would actually uh, be thinking about what architecture in space would look like. In order to uh, sort of uh, start this uh, journey, uh, I'm going to show you a few slides of uh, the Mars Science City that we were asked to design for the UAE Space Center that was going to be located in the desert outside Dubai. This was a place where researchers from all over the world could go and study uh, how to produce food on Mars and how to construct our living conditions. And of course, this would also be a place where we could share knowledge, uh, basically understand and meet all of our fellow scientists in this field. Uh, but in order to de design such a space, it was important for us to understand what it means to move into space. And then we were sort of starting uh, all the way back from when humans were exploring our own planet, because we have always been traveling across distance world. It started uh, when we discovered fires. We could start moving further around. Climate change has also had a big impact. You could travel further north. Then the human race started discovering things like boats and uh, Soon we would have compasses so we could travel uh, across great oceans. And finally, today we have a, a full world map on our phone and we can go anywhere we like uh, in the world. In the Roman Empire, it took three months to travel from one end to the other on a horseback. The Magellan expedition was a three month journey from the south tip of Spain down to South America. The Trans-Siberian Highway was a four-week journey, uh, only a, a hundred years ago from now. And a couple of years ago, 50 to 60 years ago, if you wanted to travel from London to Australia, this, you had to stop ten times on the way. Uh, it would take two and a half days to get there. Today we can do that in 16 hours, and in a few years Elon promises to do this trip in less than 40 minutes. Also, uh, we have plans to go to, to space, and of course, SpaceX is one of the pioneers. Uh, we estimate it's going to take around three months to go there. So instead of traveling across oceans of water, this is very similar uh, in the future, and we will be able to travel across oceans of space instead. So going to Mars, uh, Mars is, of course, one of those eight candidates that the human race could essentially uh, uh, put a permanent presence on, and it ticks all the boxes for the things that are at hand on the planet. Mars is the closest neighbor that we have, so it's only going to take three months to go there. Um, it has a rotation almost similar to Earth. A day on Mars is very similar to a day on Earth. On contrary to other planets in our solar system, for example, Mercury has a 175-day day cycle. So you would spend a lot of time in darkness and a lot of time in lights. So Mars is actually very familiar to the way that uh, uh, the, the daily life on Earth. It has roughly the half of the size of planet Earth, but if you subtract all the water mass, it's almost equivalent. And in a strange way, Mars and Earth is like brother and sister. Sunsets are red on the blue planet, but sunsets on the red planet are blue. Mars and Earth both have an atmosphere, and if you zoom in on the surface of Mars, you will understand that Mars is a very beautiful place. There is a big craters that we one day would be able to travel through, Here's a lava flow across the surface of the planet, ice on the south pole of the planet. Here's a dust devil caught in action traveling across the surface and a mudslide falling down one of the canyons uh, of the craters. Here's some water uh, reminiscence from old times. And of course, we have the rovers that has been traveling across the surface of Mars. They have been 
uh, studying the planet and the rock formations, of, of course, taking amazing pictures of the surface itself, distant rock formations that humans one day may be able to hike through. So going to Mars, it's important to understand what Mars is like, and we have to do, uh, create a new type of architecture, a Martian vernacular, uh, an architecture that fits the conditions and the environments on the planet. A bit like on planet Earth, in Siberia, they were building igloos uh, to keep warm at night, even though it was freezingly cold. In Tunisia, they were digging underground to hold the cold air in their, sort of, in their homes. And in a similar fashion, when we go to Mars, we have to create a new type of architecture. In the beginning, we'll bring all the tools we need to create our uh, Martian homes. After a while, we'll bring the machines that will build our homes so that we can uh, remote control them uh, from planet Earth. And eventually, we'll bring uh, people that want to live there, and we don't have to bring more tools because we have everything we need on the planet. Because in a similar way as this uh, gentleman, he trapped uh, some uh, plants and some seeds and uh, minerals and water in a bottle 60 years ago, and it has not been opened since then. The only thing that went into the bottle was sunlight. And in, a sa in the same way, we had to do uh, that on the Martian uh, surface, because the Martian soil and the atmosphere contains everything we need in order to sustain life on the planet. So from the Martian soil, we can sort of uh, go through a regolith uh, plant, we can get uh, water ice out that we can thaw and create water. We can further sort of uh, uh, take these stones and we'll get bigger stones and fine sand. The fine sand, together with the water, can create bricks. We'll create uh, Martian red concrete, but we can also create uh, ceramics. And the fine sand can further be refined into different kind of minerals, uh, like aluminum and silica, um, and of course, uh, glass. And we'll be able to create electronics so that we can build our computers and our machines on the planet. And of course, we can also produce photovoltaic panels from these uh, minerals so that we can get energy on the planet. The energy we can use to go through an electrolyzer so that we get oxygen and hydrogen, um, together with the Martian atmosphere, CO2, um, and the hydrogen uh, through a safety reactor, we can create methane. Methane together with oxygen is an excellent rocket propellant so that we can get back to planet Earth again. We can also go through further uh, chemical processes so that we uh, create carbon monoxide and together with iron oxide, we create steel on the planet. We can create different kinds of plastic, soft plastics, polyethylene and polypropylene, uh, so we have fiberglass, we can create uh, furniture, bottles, and insulation, and we can uh, also have all the soft plastics like textiles, rope, tires, and so forth. And of course, all of these ingredients to life that we are creating on the surface will go into a bigger ecosystem and be recycled. And of course, m perhaps the most important thing is we'll be able to create our inflatable or the, our transparent uh, materials so that we can create domes on the surface that can uh, shield us uh, um, on the surface. And of course, the water can be used to grow plants. We can uh, uh, clean the plants through root uh, zone treatment plants, so we have water that we can go and swim in. We can also grow our food uh, uh, and our crops with aeroponics and hydroponics, and of course, in the end, we have everything we need to sustain life on the planet. And perhaps the first step is that we need a very large dome, a dome that can keep a pressure, because on the planet Mars, there is no pressure outside. So we have to create a dome that can keep the oxygen that we breathe inside. The domes are not very good for a few things, uh, like radiation, so we have to build some other structures. And as I said earlier, we will bring some machines that will help us build different structures on the planet so we can 3D print our future homes on the surface. 
But we also had to dig even further down. Seven meters underground is enough to shield us completely from the radiation. So in a way, combining all of these uh, ingredients will have everything that we need to sustain life. Digging underground, building on top of the surface, and the larger domes that will keep the air pressure inside. The biggest challenge on Mars is the radiation. Uh, you cannot live a full day on the surface, so you have to protect yourself. But with this combination of building typologies, you can sort of dig down deeper underground and all the way down in the cave underground, uh, you will be able to, to sort of get complete radiation free. But it turns out if we look at the daily life cycle on planet Earth, we only spend around 7% of our daily uh, cycle outside. The rest of the time are spent in a car, in our offices, or even in our own, own uh, homes uh, or our beds. And if we compare that to Mars, we could actually spend four hours outside on the surface of Mars. We could create, uh, spend a little bit less inside the covered spaces, and the rest of the time, equivalent to the time we were spending in our home, we would have to be underground protected. So in the beginning, we would maybe start building uh, one dome, but quickly that would turn into multiple domes that could be connected underground. When those domes become too big, at a certain point, the stresses in the membranes become too big, then we can build large uh, donut shapes in the landscape. And of course, that could expand to multiple donuts on the surface. And finally, we could continue this uh, growth forever, and they imagine living in these uh, worlds in a future life on the planet. In the example uh, from the Dubai desert, we were looking at a city for uh, around a thousand people. Uh, here, you would be able to meet uh, in these uh, bigger open spaces, and you could meander or walk through these uh, 3D printed structures into these more protected uh, uh, sort of canyons or streets where you would only get a little bit of cosmic radiation from above. And then you could further move in to sort of protected uh, buildings. Um, and we found out, it turns out, that one meter of water is actually enough to protect you from radiation. So in the future, you could imagine aquariums as windows on Mars to get daylight down into your living room and your bedrooms. And of course, on top of the buildings, you would have lush gardens that you can walk around in, exercise in, and so forth. And we would have a lot of space for food production uh, and different kinds of research on, in these uh, new homes. So a future uh, scenario for Mars could be a dome-like structure like these. And of course, Perhaps the biggest question of all is why should we go that far and why should we establish a human presence on Mars? It's because we can learn a lot from going to space. The UN Sustainable Goals, there are 17 of them and eight are directly impacted from the things that we need to understand and learn uh, by going to Mars. Things like food production, we have to understand how to make food in a very limited space. We have to care about our drinking water. We have to create renewable energies and so forth. So in order to go to Mars, we'll understand a lot and we'll create a lot of tools that we need to use in order to create a sustainable life on our own planet Earth. This is an image taken from one of the Apollo missions, looking back at Earth. The astronauts coming back after they've seen our little blue planet in the distance, they all tell the same story, that they understand how fragile this blue dot is, or this blue globe is. And they understand how important it is to, that we take care of it, become good custodians. So in a not-so-distant future, this might be the, the reality on this, from the surface of Mars. This is an image taken from the Curiosity rover, uh, where you can see this little blue dot on the sky, which is planet Earth. Thank you. <laughs>